so I gotta say, first and foremost, uh, this film is phenomenal. Uh, I watched it earlier this morning because I wanted to be as you know freshly involved with it as possible for our chat, and I just I loved it. Um, now I love that this is also your first time producing, uh, as it is you're starring in this. What about the material really sparked your interest to want to take on both hats uh, for this one? I mean. It was such a beautiful film. I, 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 I remember that from the first moment I read the script, I wanted to be involved in this film. And uh, if that meant producing it, then I'd do it because I, I just think that it's such a beautiful story um, and it deserves a place out in the world. So I'm just so happy that all of those things came together and and and... And we were able to do it. Um, it was my first time putting on the producer hat. So that was very interesting. And I learned a lot, but um, I think it's just where, as an actor, especially it's, it's all in the script. So when you, you read the script and it, if it takes you, then um, that's always a good thing. And it definitely took me. So, yeah. Well, I, I love that. And so since you mentioned, you know, learning a lot from the producer side of things, what was one of your favorite things to to get to learn uh, from that side of the field uh, in comparison to acting? Um, <laughs> how big everything is outside of acting. <laughs> it was it was really beneficial as an actor to go through that because you get to experience uh, every facet of of what filmmaking is, of what of what um of, you know, the inception to the final product. And I think that's really beneficial as an actor to that, that, that gives you such perspective. And I think that's a beautiful thing um, whenever you can get it in any kind of regard. So I just got it in regards to filmmaking, which was great. Well, it's, it's good to have, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have those, those, that variety of perspectives. Um, now I, I, I love, uh, the dynamic that, that you, uh, and I'm sorry, my dog is <laughs> whining in the background. Oh, you hear him. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, sorry. I, I love the dynamic that, that you and Blake have in this film. And I know that he, he also co-wrote the film and, uh, I'm curious, what was that? You're good. We're in it. We're here. We're what, here. what was it like developing that, that rapport with him uh, prior to filming and then going into it? Blake and I know each other. We've we've been in each other's lives for about 10 years at this point. So there's, you know, there was nothing new there. Um, uh, and the beauty of the film is that I, I got to work with a lot of close friends. Um, so there was... There were already pre-existing relationships when it came to the film, which I think was a nice luxury that we did not take for granted. We 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 knew it was an intimate film. We knew it was a, a film that handled some pretty intense subject matter. So to be able to do that with people that you trust and people that you feel safe with is, I think crucial to the project and to, to really telling that story truthfully. Um, and, and hopefully we did that. So I, I, I just think that was a, a lovely, uh, a lovely part of making the film that we got to experience was that we got to shoot it with our friends. And then that the, we, we I, like, I forget, I forget. I, I got to shoot, I got to make a film with my friends and then that film got to make its way out into the world. When does that happen? Never. So I, I, uh, I really appreciate that we got to that we got to that I got to experience the film in that way. Since you do mention that this film goes to a lot of very you know emotionally vulnerable depths, even though you were friends beforehand, I mean, what what kind of conversations do you all have with one another to really create this comfortable space to to go to those depths for these scenes? I mean, every single for the characters and for the story um, uh, to really, you know, to really fly. I mean, I, I, we, I think we had multiple rehearsals. We, we had I, about 10 or 12 drafts of that script. We spoke about every single scene. I asked Matt any and every question I had about my character and about the story. And, uh, we really dug in because we 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 didn't want to tell this story um, 
uh, in a false way. This is intense subject matter, and and I think having a, a an authentic relationship to it is is really integral to the film. Um, and and I mean Matt as a director, he he was wonderful throughout this entire process. You know, when Matt has his own his own personal trauma um, that he's been so brave uh, about sharing with this story. So I think having someone tell this story. I think having someone tell this story who understands it on a personal level uh, is crucial to the sub to this subject matter. I, I, I really feel honored to be able to be a part of that story and have someone like Matt um, be the one to tell it. Um, yeah, did I answer the question? I, I, I honestly feel like we didn't leave a stone unturned. We really dug in. There was... Uh, Matt and Blake stayed in my apartment two months leading up to the first day of production. So every night we were covering something every night, uh, they were reworking the script every night we would, uh, look at a line and see if it read. And if it didn't, we, we asked why. And then we looked at changing that it was, it was very much, it was, it was, <laughs> It was the most extensive uh, work I think I had done at, at dissecting a script and, and making it come to life with the entire team. Well, I love that you got outside to have of, Sorry, outside of like a, a, a theater piece, outside of a play, it very much felt like theater in that way. You know, dissecting the script. And like, it felt like we were looking at Shakespeare, honestly. It was very... Um, we looked at every specific part of that story because we had to, I think if you, we wouldn't have done it justice if we didn't. Yeah. It's uh, I love that you got to have that collaborative experience because you're right. It's uh, it's, it's not only vital for you as an actor, but also for this kind of story. Was there any one scene then that you were, you would say you were either most concerned or most eager to really try and help get right uh, for this film? Um, it's definitely the scene towards the end of the film, uh, with Zoe and Dylan. Um, is this a spoiler? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the scene in the third act, uh, I think where Zoe, um, finally breaks down because she tells her story in that scene and it's a real moment of release for her. Um, and and I, I was really nervous about that scene because I wanted it to be authentic. I, I wanted it to feel, I didn't want it to feel like I was, you know, an actor pretending. I just, I just wanted, I just really felt like that scene and those words were important. Um, and I really wanted to make sure that that came through. So that scene. Also, I've never played a ukulele in front of anyone before. So uh, oddly enough, that scene <laughs> where I play a ukulele was nerve wracking too. Completely different kind of scene, but um, nerves were had that night. So it's funny you mentioned that because that was actually going to be one of my questions was about the the ukulele. I love uh, how your character just takes to it right away uh, and and it keeps coming back in the film. And I especially love that that one scene near the near the final act where she uh, where you're singing. And, you know, how so you just said you hadn't played it in front of everybody. But were you familiar with that instrument and with that song prior? Yeah, that's um that's that's an original song. I uh, I um I wrote that. So I very much I know that song intimately. Um but uh and and i and i i can kind of play the ukulele i i was working on a project for like six months in vancouver and i had so much downtime um i think this was like back in 2016 and i decided to pick up the ukulele and i just i just started watching a, a bunch of youtube tutorials on it and and I really took to the instrument and I loved it so much. And so I started playing the ukulele and I 
I started writing my own songs and that's one of them. And originally it wasn't in the script, um, but Blake knew about it and he pitched it to Matt and he said, this is a really beautiful song that I think would fit in the film quite nicely. And Matt heard it and here we are. It's in the film. I, I love that. And I, I totally agree. I was actually curious if you had written it specifically for the film or not, because it fits so well in there. Um, yeah. Were you, were, how did you feel then when he, when you, you learned that he wanted that specific song uh, out of, out of all the other ones you'd written for this one? Um, I mean, I had a, I was, I, I had a very, I loved it. I loved it really. At the end of the day, it was, it was really nice because I, I do love that song and I connect to it so deeply. So to be able to bring something that I connect to so deeply into a character like Zoe um, was actually kind of a gift at the end of the day. I mean, my I think when we filmed it, I was nervous leading up to it, but then when we filmed it, it just kind of it felt right. So yeah, I'm happy that Matt did that. <laughs> that song uh -huh. made it. That's yeah. great. That's great that you got to bring that that personal touch uh, to to Zoe. And and on that note, then I mean, how you know, every actor always finds roles that could be totally different from them, or totally as or super similar to themselves. How how much would you find you identify with Zoe? Because I mean, even I found I was identifying with Zoe a lot throughout the film. Um, so Zoe is all of us. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. Zoe um, is. She doesn't want to deal with any of her problems. She's. Um, uh, she's, she's deeply wounded, but is trying to act like nothing is happening. So in that regard, I think Zoe as a character speaks to a lot of people. Um, definitely to me, that was, that was a part of the character that I, I looked at and I said, I can play that. <laughs> um, uh, cause I think a lot of us have that kind of internal struggle where we want to be doing okay. And we want to be showing everyone that we're fine. And so we just kind of put on a mask and ignored the issues in our life, in our lives. Um, I think Zoe attempts to do that throughout most of the film. And then, you know, finally in the third act, she just kind of has to let it out. Um, and she's in a very safe space to do so. So it's a moment she needs. And I think that's true for a lot of people. You always need a release. You need that release. Um, to be able to work through something. It can't just be bottled up forever because it'll find a way. So in that way, I felt very close to Zoe. I love that because, yeah, you're right. We all need to find ways to process rather than bottle up. And uh, I feel like this film in a lot of ways is going to be almost a, a, a vicarious uh, cathartic release for a lot of people. So oh, yes, this entire film is a catharsis. It's, it is. It, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy you read it that way. Cause I think that is the intention of the film. Well, I certainly look forward to, to when it comes out and I can, uh, well, I mean, I'm going to spread the word about it ahead of time, but to continue to spread the word about it as well. Before I let you go, uh, I did want, I did just have a couple of questions to look away from the film. Uh, you mentioned you're up, you're up North filming uh, right now. And I know you can't give too much away about what's going on in the new season. Um, I mean, um, you know, what can you, what can you tease though about, you know, Newman's continued rise uh after what we saw in season three what can i tease <laughs> i mean i think in true boys fashion it's just like every other character on the show where you're like are they gonna get a break no <laughs> that's what i can tease Consistent. Um, no, nothing. That's it. I can't, Grant. I can't. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> I hear you. Superhero shows. <laughs> Much as I can give. They, they've got that lock and key. I, I can appreciate it. Yeah, they'll um, know. They'll find this. They'll know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, you know, I love that with a show like this, we're seeing people who are actually in superhero franchises uh, show their faces. I mean, Charlize Theron 
you know, surprised us by being in both the premiere of season three and in uh, Doctor Strange 2 at the same time. And I'm curious, now that you've been in a show in which it's all about taking down superheroes, could you ever see yourself joining uh, a world that takes them seriously? Maybe playing a superhero? I don't know. I've never been asked that question before. That's actually really funny. Oh, God, we do poke fun at it so much, don't we? I don't know. I, I... And I think if you asked me like 10 years ago, I would have been really excited about it. But I think we're all collectively kind of at a point of superhero fatigue. So I, I you know, if something if something came along that was an incredible role, of course, I think I, I go by what the role is. Um, but just a superhero for being a superhero's sake, probably not. I could appreciate that. And that's uh, that's the best way to look at it, really, is, you know, you yeah. always want you always want the best material. So <laughs> And that's what that's what we want too as audiences. We don't want this <laughs> superhero for superhero's sake. So, uh, well, I, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that you maybe it comes something good comes across. Um, and for my very final question, uh, we also did just get to see you return as as Farah for uh, Modern Warfare Two, and uh, I mean I, I've loved seeing her journey through these two games uh, thus far. And I mean I, I know that Call of Duty loves keeping franchises alive, and uh, this one is doing just numbers uh with its sales so far um i'm curious you know ha have you heard any talks about a third game coming back and even if you haven't i mean or have or haven't what would you like to see uh from her next journey in, in this series oh i oh no, i haven't heard a thing but um i was i was just so happy that i got to come back and and be able to 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 play Farah and to, for me, myself, just to know where, what's happening with her. It was really interesting. Like as someone who isn't, I don't, I don't, you know, play the game, but I myself was really intrigued to find out what happened to Farah. So I would hope so. There are so many, there are so many people involved in that story. So I would, I would, I would love to see that continue. Um, I think there's fertile ground for those stories. So I don't know. Fingers crossed. I hope. <laughs> 